The European Parliament here in Strasbourg has travelled a long way since the days when it was little more than a forum for discussing legislation initiated and approved elsewhere in the EU system. With each new EU treaty in the past 25 years, Maastricht, Amsterdam, Nice and Lisbon, Parliament has accumulated more and more powers, legislative, budgetary, powers of scrutiny. Nonetheless, many people still see the European Parliament as the least powerful of all the EU's institutions. How can it be powerful, they ask, if it doesn't do what national parliaments do, initiate legislation that affects our day-to-day -day lives? That function does indeed fall to the European Commission, although a mechanism exists in Parliament to prod them to initiate laws in certain areas. But beyond that, the list of powers that the Parliament has is extensive. From approving laws that it considers to be good, to rejecting, or at least amending, laws that it considers to be bad for European citizens. Parliament is the only EU institution that's directly elected. In a union that puts democracy first, that's an important clout. Since the Lisbon Treaty of 2009, co-decision rights in the vast majority of legislation with the European Council or with member states have increased hugely. It can amend or reject outright legislation advanced by the Commission in the diverse areas that we all have a growing interest in. Economic governance, immigration, energy, transport, the environment and consumer protection, to name but a few. And high on the list, data protection. Witness the Commission's ill-fated attempts to join ACTA, an international agreement designed, the Commission said, to stop piracy and intellectual property theft. A huge majority of MEPs felt it would expose individuals to intrusive data raids and booted it into the long grass. MEPs are on an equal footing with the European Council in passing the EU's budget, which currently stands at around 135 billion euros per year. They're involved in the preparation of the budget in no-nonsense committee rooms like this. They monitor its implementation and they sign it off, discharge it in the jargon, but only when they're happy with the way in which it's been implemented. Parliament and the Council also have the final say on the long-term work programme of the EU, rejecting, accepting, negotiating its seven-year budget. Under Lisbon, Parliament elects the President of the European Commission, strengthening its democratic legitimacy. EU heads of state propose a candidate with due regard to the results of the European elections. Parliament can also move a motion of censure against the European Commission and ultimately fire it. So far, not one of eight such motions put forward has been adopted. But the sword is there. In 1999, the Commission, headed by Jacques Santerre, stepped down before Parliament forced it to. Parliament has the power to elect the European Ombudsman, or woman, who in turn reports to MEPs. It must also be consulted before the President and Executive Board of the European Central Bank are appointed. And back to people power, because the power of the Parliament ultimately rests with the people who elect it, and the power of the people to change anything ultimately rests with the Parliament, at least in the EU context. So, any EU citizens' organisation or company can make a petition to Parliament demanding change to existing law or new law altogether. Or they can launch a citizens' initiative, as long as it fits within EU competences. A voice for the people.